Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and a very good afternoon. Today is the first lecture of a series of lectures on surgical disorders. I would like to explain on the first day that these lectures will be for clinical students, undergraduate medical students and dental students and will also be a very good resource for postgraduate registrars who are doing their training in general surgery and maybe of some value to already trained surgeons as well. So please watch these movies with and this, these clips with this context that some of these things will be very, very basics because I want to address all the spectrum starting from a third year medical student to the developed surgeons. In this first talk, today our topic is pattern of surgical diseases. So I will just give an overview of types and categories of diseases which a person or a patient can have when he actually consults a surgeon. We'll take them one by one. One, the first group of diseases are called congenital diseases. These are the diseases which occur due to chromosomal problems and uh, they develop as a part of developmental defect in a child. In other words, he is born with these diseases. Now, these diseases can be broadly divided into those which are functional diseases and those which are structural diseases. By functional diseases, I mean that, for example, a hormone is missing. An enzyme is missing and when that hormone and enzyme is missing then the metabolic actions and as a result of that the effect on the anatomy of the organs and the function of the organs are disturbed. Now, These type of diseases are called functional diseases. For example, if peroxidase enzyme is not there in the body because of some congenital reason, some hormonal, some you know chromosomal disorder then there will be thyroid enlargement there will be other problems. Similarly, there can be deficiencies of insulin to start with and patient can have type 1 diabetes mellitus. Similarly, some more enzymes and hormones may be missing and because of that, the liver may have glycogen storage diseases. So, these set of all diseases are called the functional congenital diseases. The other type of the diseases are actually structural diseases where because of the embryological reasons, the organs are not formed or ill-formed or some defects are left like a patient may have a heart which does not have a septum in between. There may be atrial septal defect. There may be ventral septical defect. There may be overriding of the aorta. There may be a child which is born with a cleft lip. Maybe a child born with a cleft palate, imperforate anus, some kind of a, you know, congenital anatomical problems in which the genital structures are not there. Or a, on, on a benign way, a patient may have got a simple cyst in the liver or simple cyst in the kidney and so on and so forth. So the other group of the diseases which comes in the category of congenital diseases are the structural diseases where structures are at fault. Now these diseases are usually not curable to a larger extent, usually I am saying. Although the modern treatment and uh, gene therapies are uh, un under trial, where some of the de these diseases can be addressed. So as I was saying, this fu these functional diseases, they sometimes are not very curable. When they are mild, a person may live with them and can live with them forever. And if they are on a severe nature, obviously the longevity of a person and ultimate effect on the organs, they show the early mortality of these uh, or, or at least uh, mor morbidity in this group of the patients. Structural problems, sometimes they are very cosmetic only, they are very mild, but if they are uh, more than cosmetic problems, then they can be surgically managed like cleft lip can be operated, cleft palate can be operated and various other things which I mentioned can be operated. So please remember whenever someone comes with a surgical disorder and please remember that these patients may come at a later age as well. 
it not it is not necessary that a patient has a hernia and this hernia is a congenital hernia but patient may have not taken the treatment when he was a child his parents have not taken him to the doctor and he may come as an adult with a congenital problem like patent process vaginalis so please remember this is one of the category of the disease with which a surgical patient can come when patient has got a congenital disease patient is born the history is very long it is patient are born with them and usually these structure problems if patient comes in adult age usually the body has compromised and symptoms are not very many the the second group of the diseases are called inflammatory diseases since i am just uh, recording this lecture not only for the surgeons which are experienced surgeons but even for the third year medical students so i would like to just briefly tell what do we mean by inflammatory diseases look our body organs they require oxygen oxygen reaches to them through blood vessels so our organs are supplied by blood vessels there are some organs which have got more blood supply and some of the organ has got scarce blood supply for example our cartilage has got a very minimum blood supply cornea does not have a blood supply but rest of the organs have got blood supply some of the organs are very very vascular according to their need of the blood they have now inflammatory inflammation is a process which is a response of the tissues to any insult and this response has to be a vascular response i repeat it cells they group together and form tissues now these tissues when are insulted insulted in any way this may be a mechanical insult like an injury it may be a chemical insult you put an acid on it or alkali in it high or low ph content things are poured on it it may be bacterial insult it may be viral insult it may be fungal insult it may be electrical insult so any it may be immunological insult so any insult to a tissue results into a response which is and if that response is vascular response it is called called inflammation this is a natural response and in this response the vessels they dilate because they dilate they attract more blood when more blood comes then intracapillary pressure rises as a result serum goes out from the in the permeability of the capillaries are increased so tissue get edematous because fluid goes into the interstitial space and during this pressure there is stretch and also production of anaerobic substances which are called p substances also result in pain so there is more blood this is why the area becomes red there is production of the p substances it becomes painful then when you touch it it is warm because there is more blood in there and then there is a swelling so these are the features which occur whenever there is inflammation in any any tissue now this is a protective phenomena this is to actually help the body to combat that insult but when it is exaggerated and as a result of it it causes damage to the tissues now this type of diseases are called inflammatory diseases so the common boil is an inflammation tonsillitis is an inflammation appendicitis is an inflammation right hepatitis is an inflammation the causative factors are different so these type of, of diseases are called inflammatory diseases now inflammatory diseases inflammatory diseases again can be divided into acute and chronic acute when it is sudden in onset when history is very short and usually when patient has got acute inflammation the history is of couple of days one day or a half day area becomes red it is hot it is tender it is swollen and most of the time acute inflammations are also associated with systemic symptoms which is fever along with fever there may be body aches and pains 
So when any disease comes with this type of a pattern, usually it is called acute inflammation. Now this inflammation can be chronic inflammation. Chronic inflammation is one which is there for a long period of time. When body's immunity is better, then the infection may prolong for a long period of time. It is, then it is called a chronic, chronic uh, infection. Chronic infection can be further divided into non-specific and specific. Non-specific is one when the when it is continuation of an acute inflammation, when there are no specific microorganisms or specific agent is involved, but whatever has initiated the, the inflammation is continuously affecting the area and body's immunity is such that the inflammation does not subside on its own. It is called non-specific. But sometimes this chronic infection is because of some specific organism. The biggest example of it is tuberculosis. When there is tuberculosis, an infection, inflammation is there maybe in the lung, maybe in the lymph nodes or the intestine, wherever. This type of chronic inflammation is called chronic specific inflammation. Syphilis is another example. Right? And there can be other examples as well where there is a specific reason for the chronic inflammation. Now, when there is chronic inflammation, again, the, the symptoms are like that of acute but of, but of less magnitude and there is evidence of decreased immunity of the body. Now, in case of acute inflammation, it is this is history which is very important which tells us about the nature of the disease plus we require blood examinations and when we do blood examination usually the total leukocyte count is high and there is a left shift which means neutrophils are more as compared to lymphocytes and if you check the ESR, ESR is also high and C-reactive proteins are also high whereas in chronic inflammation usually it are, you know, especially when it is specific one, it, there are lymphocytes which are more, lymphocytes are more high as compared to the polys and ES, ESR is markedly high. However, in order to really diagnose proper chronic specific inflammation, we need at least a biopsy or we require serological tests to confirm that it is a chronic inf inflammation. So that's about the inflammatory diseases. The third category is called neoplasia. Neo mean new, plasia mean growth. In other words, tumors. I want to just remind you that whenever a patient walks in your clinic, he can have either congenital diseases, and I've told you the specifics about it, can have inflammatory diseases, and I've told you the specifics about it, or patient can have a tumor. Now, tumor actually means a mass. But when we talk about technical terms, tumor is a growth of the native tissues. For example, if there's a tumor in the liver, when you take a section and put it under a microscope, these are actually liver cells which are there. If you took a breast, the tumors will have breast cells. However, because of the behavior, they can be divided into B9, and malignant. Benign tumors are those which are there and their effect is only because of their physical presence. For example, if there is a tumor here on the nose, it will look very ugly and may compress on the nose and there will be problem in breathing. If there is a tumor in the pituitary, which is a benign tumor, because of the pressure, it can cause problem and it can affect the optic chiasma and the vision. But it is just because of the pressure. It is there in the gut, it is blocking it because of the pressure, nothing more than that. However, when a tumor is malignant, in these tumors are those which not only locally invasive, but they oh, and cause pressure on it. And because of that, there is symptom. For example, it's a tumor of the rectum, it will just block it. But above all, they actually have roots, which are called technically metastases, on the different part of the body like a cancer of the ball, ball can go into the liver. Cancer of the breast can go into the bones. Cancer of the thyroid can go into the bone. Now
Now, when a tumor is one which is invasive, which locally invades and goes into the other part of the body and it also produces systemic effects which leads to ill health, these are called malignant tumors, which in other words is called cancer. So, please remember one of the category of the diseases are actually neoplasia in which and the definition, you know, the definition of a cancer or a malignant tumor is that this is growth of a tissue and this growth of the tissue exceeds, this growth exceeds than that of normal growth and it continue to grow in that excessive manner even if the initiating factor is withdrawn. In this lecture, I would not like to go into the details of why tumors are formed, what are the immunological reason for it, when we will discuss neoplasia, inshallah, we will discuss in detail about it. But please remember that one category of diseases are neoplasia. And they can also be confirmed only by histopathology. Without having a biopsy, we actually cannot diagnose or we cannot confirm the tumor, the neoplasial, neoplasial diseases. The next category are called immunological diseases. These diseases are because of usually they don't come into the surgical domain and usually they are dealt by dermatologists or physicians or immunologists but it is important that we know sometime the immunity of the body is decreased and there are multiple reasons of, of that. Because of that the immunological responses result both functional and structural problems on the body. The examples are rheumatoid arthritis where there is inflammation of the joints, scleroderma where skin becomes very thick, SLE, systemic lupus erythematosus where there are red spots here on the face and there are many more uh, you know diseases as well which have got immunological uh, origin and when we will go in detail in our subsequent lectures I will be discussing a lot about those diseases. Sometime they come to the surgeons, for example, scleroderma of the esophagus will come to the surgeon because it will causing uh, an obstructive symptoms of the esophagus. But for today, that's enough about the immunological diseases. Now the next group of diseases are called traumatic diseases. A bulk of the patients which come to surgeon are actually because of the trauma. And they can be a very trivial trauma to a major penetration of the body cavity, breakage of the bone, head injury, injury to the ear, nose and throat region or you know whole any part of the body. So when someone develops an accident, sometime mechanical accident because of the roadside accident or domestic trauma or any weapon injury or a gunshot injury, so these type of diseases are called traumatic diseases. And inshallah, when we will be studying trauma, and I'll be discussing with you ATLS, inshallah, I'll be talking more about it. And lastly, there's a group of diseases which I can group it into miscellaneous diseases. They are neither congenital nor inflammatory, and nor neo neither neoplastic or immunological or traumatic. They are miscellaneous. They come into various other categories which are not in these categories. So that's all for today. This was uh, an introductory lecture in which I discussed with you what are the various patterns of surgical diseases with which a patient comes to you. Next time, inshallah, we will uh, be more precise and I'll be talking with the uh, new topics about the surgical disorders. Inshallah, I have got a plan that I'll complete this series of lectures and uh, whatever humble knowledge and experience of about 39 years I had in the field of surgery, I will just present it to my audience and to my students and my dear ones. Because uh, on my channel, which is uh, Professor Dr. Javed Iqbal, I talk on various topics, but there was a continuous demand that I must share my surgical knowledge also with you. So with this humble presentation, I have started and inshallah, we will continue that. Thank you very much.